It's Platt, and today we celebrate Oktoberfest in the Sierras. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. Well, keeping with the theme in the last couple weeks, I thought I'd try another Oktoberfest beer, and this one comes to us from the fine folks at Sierra Nevada Brewing. Uh, we've reviewed, I think I've done a couple of their beers on uh, the Platt Beer of the Week series. I know for sure we did the Narwhal Stout. If you remember that one, uh, the beer was named after the the Arctic uh, mammal, uh, sea mammal, uh, named the narwhal. The narwhal is basically a small whale that's bigger than a porpoise. It's a small whale that has like a unicorn horn <laughs> growing out the top of it. Uh, fascinating. The beer was great. It's a very multi great great stout beer, but I just remember more reading about the, the, the creature. Very interesting, but we've reviewed a couple of these beers, but to quickly go over the brewery a little bit, um, Sierra Nevada Brewing was founded in 1979 by a couple of gentlemen, Ken Grossman and Paul Camuzzi. Um, Sierra Nevada Brewing is located in Chico, California, northern end of California, not far from the Sierra Nevada Mountains, which uh, was a great uh, inspiration for the brewery. Um, Ken Grossman himself has become, over the last 40 years, has become, I guess you could say, one of the forefathers of the craft brewing scene. His name's up there with the Fritz Mate tags, and depending on your view of uh, Samuel Adams, the Jim Cooks of the world, Sam Calagione, and uh, he is still highly involved with the brewery today. His partner, Paul Camusi, though, is no longer with the team. He left the brewery. In 1998, probably was bought out. I'm not not sure the arrangement, but he may regret that because today, Sierra Nevada is the seventh largest brewery in America. Uh, you might remember when we reviewed Samuel Adams, the Oktoberfest. I talked about, you know, kind of the one point, are you no longer craft? Because a lot of the hardcore craft people really don't like Samuel Adams, and they're the fourth largest brewery. Sierra Nevada is the seventh largest brewery, but mainly due to Ken's reputation, they still have craft cred. Uh, maybe partially it's because they didn't get into things like Twisted Tea or the truly sparkling beverages. They've pretty much stuck to beer. So that, that's probably some of it right there. But uh, uh, the old saying from the little acorn grows a mighty oak is a prime example of that. Uh, again, today, seventh largest brewer in the U.S. Uh, back 40 years ago when it started, 1980, their first full year, they only sold 950 barrels of beer. I'm pretty sure they might <laughs> produce that in a day now. But uh, definitely different times back then. And people have to remember with their story, home brewing just became legal in 1979. These guys were home brewers before. But home brewing it just technically became legal, so to quickly turn from a home brewer to a craft brewer was a pretty big step back then. Um, real quick, oh, one other note about Sierra Nevada, just remembered. Uh, they are very proactive as far as environmentalism goes. In 2010, the EPA named them Green Business of the Year, so something to definitely be proud of. Real quick, I want to kind of talk about some of their more popular beers. Um, first and foremost is the Pale Ale, that's their flagship beer. I'm going to dare say, and I may have said this before on other videos, that if you're over the age of about 40, probably your first Pale Ale was the Sierra Nevada. Uh, I remember 25 plus years ago, whatever it was, when I started bartending, that a lot of the places, especially the chain restaurants at the time, did not carry that. But if you went to a little nicer bar, they had a little wider variety, they had a Pale Ale, but it was going to be Sierra Nevada. And it, like I said, uh, the beer is not just big for Sierra Nevada Brewing, but I think it's an important beer as far as craft beer goes in general because, again, it introduced a lot of people to the Pale Ale, which then eventually got us to the IPA and their next beer, the Torpedo Extra IPA, or as they refer to it, the original Extra IPA. And if you think about one thing we've learned about over the years about craft brewing, well, if we can do something like this, well, then we're going to do this next. And so, like I said, we went from the Pale Ale, introducing people to Pale Ales, to the IPA, to then the Extra IPAs, Imperial IPAs, Double IPAs, what have you. And the uh, Torpedo Extra IPA was Sierra Nevada's gift to that category. Uh, the next beer we're going to talk about is another uh, variation or take on the IPA, and that is their 
Dankful Hoppy IPA. Uh, it's a extra hoppy IPA. Um, something brewers will never. I, I don't think you'd get a brewer to admit this, but two or three years ago, when uh, you know, these danky, the term dank was used with these IPAs and danky IPAs. Uh, it just happened to coincide about the same time that some states were legalizing marijuana. Now, what was spoken at the time was there was a great fear in the beer industry that once marijuana got legalized, they would take away, not just from beer specifically, but just alcohol in general, but they were really worried that they were going to lose out. And oddly enough, some of the states that first legalized marijuana were also huge craft beer states. So I think the brewers took that as an opportunity to create something, you know, to kind of cater toward that crowd. Um, if you are not a cannabis smoker, the term dink just refers to a certain, the smell, a certain quality of marijuana. It's a term generally used with marijuana. So to combine it with beer or use it in beer, again, kind of a cross-marketing thing. And it makes sense since the cannabis plant and the hop plant are related. And again, you throw enough hops in there, you do kind of get that, you know, it does kind of recall your mind, you know, of, of cannabis. And uh, la or a couple more beers. Uh, next, they're Bigfoot Barley Wine. Here in the U.S., they, it's labeled as a barley wine style ale. Uh, somehow, the people that regulate alcohol in the U.S., the TTB, uh, believe you are not intelligent enough to know the difference between a barley wine and a Merlot. So we have to label it because we don't want any confusion. Uh, the reality is Sierra Nevada does not make more low, so I don't know why people get confused. But that's a government regulation for you. And last but not least, since we are trying a classic German-style beer here today, I want to talk about another uh, classic German beer they do uh, called the Killer Weiss. It is their take on a Bavarian wheat beer. Um, very nice beer I've had before, haven't reviewed it, but it is good beer, so check that out. Well, before we try this beer, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd take a little time and kind of update you stuff on the channel and just get a little more interaction and, and talking about this. Uh, first and foremost, I really, really want to encourage people to follow me on my other social media, Instagram and Twitter. I don't do a lot of content on Instagram, but I'm starting to do some more content, and I think it's going to come in handy in the future. Uh, Twitter, I'm on every day, and it's a great way if you ever want to get a hold of me, ask a question, what have you. Uh, feel free for that. Uh, also, too, I want to start doing more, uh, even though the town, Vegas, is still at the time of this recording. Uh, I think this video is going to show in October, but I, th I think I'm recording this in September. Uh, we're still not open yet. They finally just reopened the bars, which I'll touch on in a little bit. But uh, the town's still kind of dead, but it's still Vegas at the end of the day. And I, there's there's some more things I kind of want to show, or I see some just silly stuff in this town. And I, I think it's easier to show that stuff through Instagram and Twitter than necessarily doing an entire video shooting, editing, all that stuff. So if you follow me on the other social media pages, uh, you can see some of that stuff there. Uh, also, it's important for the next topic we're going to talk about. Uh, years ago when I started this YouTube channel, if you subscribed to my channel, then in your feed, your little home page that you'd go to when you go to YouTube, you would get notification that, hey, Platt has another video out. Well, a few years back, YouTube and their wisdom decided, well, hey, we're going to... Uh, we're, too many people, you know, people have subscribed to too many channels. They got too much stuff in their inbox. So, if they really, really want to see your stuff and want really want to get notified, they'll hit the notification bell. And that was something they pushed for a few years. Uh, I unfortunately did not know as much as I should have about it at the time, so I never really pushed you guys for that. Um, but uh, and and I tried to keep a consistent posting schedule Mondays and Fridays, so at least you kind of know you know, when videos would be coming out. Uh, unbeknownst to me, though, I guess in the last month or two, YouTube has decided to drop the notification thing, but they have not gone back to the old way, where you would get notified every time a new video. Now it's kind of random. You're kind of just, you know, left helpless to the algorithm to decide whether they want to push my video into your feed or something, you know, another channel you follow or what have you. 
So you probably won't get notified, or you probably don't get notified now of when I post a video. So I want to encourage you again to go back to my other social media, Instagram, and more importantly, Twitter for that, because every time I post a video to YouTube, I also let my Twitter followers know. So it's a, it's a way to know when I post new stuff as far as video goes, and again, any other content that may not be video related, you can find on Twitter. So I want to encourage that. Uh, next, I want to talk about uh, a couple of video series that I'd started to do midsummer, and then they shut down the bars and stuff. I'd started posting three videos a week. I've done two videos for over a year now, probably the last couple of years. I've done two videos a week for a while. I guess a little over a year because I've been doing this beer series a little over a year. So, but anyway. I decided to go three videos a week. I had more time on my hands, <laughs> unfortunately, because they won't let me bartend. Uh, but I wanted to spend more content. I want, I, I want to get, in, in all honesty, I want to get this YouTube thing rolling. I'm probably at the time of recording around 18,000 viewers or subscribers, and I just I want to get this going. Um, a, because I like doing it, and B, there's just so much uncertainty out here in Vegas, and I kind of need to get a good side hustle going. But anyway, I. I wanted to start shooting three videos a week. Well, like I said, they shut down the bars out here. And also, for some reason, the liquor stores around here kind of cut back on their selection. I, I I, think we all know that people are drinking more these days. I, so I don't know if they're drinking them dry or they're just kind of sticking to the, the basics. You know, Bud and Jack Daniels and Sutter Home Wine, stuff like that. So I dropped those two series. But now that the bars are kind of open, again... I'm shooting this in late September. This will premiere sometime in October. As of right now, you still there's only 50% capacity in the hotels. You still have to wear a mask everywhere. You can only sit at every other bar stool. It's still kind of a mess out here, but things are have opened up a little bit more. So I think I'm probably sometime around November. Or so I may jumpstart those two video series again. Hopefully, we'll get a little more booze in the liquor store, and hopefully. We'll start opening this town back up a little bit more. Last but not least, something I recently discovered because uh, I'm trying to become a little better YouTuber uh, and would love your feedback anytime on the topic. Uh, one of the things I do want uh, I quickly learned was the community section. On You would go to my channel homepage and they would have playlists and videos, stuff like that, and you'd see a little intro video. Uh, but they also now have a community section where it allows for greater interactions. And one of the things they have in the community section is a poll feature and so I'm going to start posting a poll once a week uh, I think the week I shoot this video I have a poll up about your favorite big brand beer Bud Miller Coors Michelob Ultra and stuff like that but I'm going to start doing once a week little polls stuff like that Tr again try to get gain greater interaction because part of it is like if you watch a video you may not be in the mood for October Fist beer, this, that, or the other. You watch the video, it doesn't move you, so there's no comments. But you may see something else, you know. But I still want a little feedback, you know, and I want to create other ways where we can have that kind of interaction because I'm here for you guys. So, with that being said, enough talking about YouTube. Let's drink a beer on YouTube. So this is a lighter copper in color. Um, I remember the I think the same amount of Oktoberfest we had was a little darker, a little more brown. This is a lighter copper. Faint hops, not much hops there, a little bit of malt. Wow, that's nice. That's real nice. It has a little bit of effervescence to it. In a certain way, uh, body is uh, medium minus. Uh, man, that's just good. Just good maltiness. Um, I will say, out of the three Oktoberfests I've tried so far, this is the most balanced and a little less malty. Uh, if you think about the style of beers here, Nevada is known for their. They're slightly on the hoppier edge, so they're probably, you know, even though they do big multi beers like the Narwhal Stout, Barley Wine, however, um, they kind of specialize in that classic Northwest hop in their beer, however, and they, they probably don't use that here, but again, out of the Oktoberfest, this one shifts more that way. 
man, that just goes down easy. There's a lot of flavor. A um, little more, the finish is a little bit longer than the other two beers also. Uh, it kind of sits on your palate a little bit longer, which I kind of like. Um, man, that's just a nice, good beer. Um, we're in, I guess the term would be Indian summer right now, so it's still warm. Well, it's still hot in Vegas, but it's always hot in Vegas. But in the rest of America, it's cooling down, but still nice, warm, you know, Indian summer days. And this beer uh, is perfect for that. Uh, just a real nice, well-executed beer by one, one of the great breweries here in America. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.